All right, hello everybody. My name is Christina Jones. My pronouns are she, her. I am the Family Programs Coordinator at the Vancouver Art Gallery. We are so grateful that you're here joining us for another session of Art at Home. Uh, welcome everybody. I would like to start by acknowledging that the Vancouver Art Gallery is on the unceded territory of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh Nations. And today I'm joining you from the unceded ancestral lands of the Comox Nation. Now, I said the word unceded. The word unceded, it means that the rights to the lands and waters, they were never given an agreement. They were stolen without permission from the indigenous caretakers of the land. And to honor the ancestors of the land that I'm on, I wish to listen and learn to indigenous communities and to share what I have learned and to think carefully about ways that I can do better to protect the land and the communities around me. And you know what, if you wanna know who's indigenous land, that territory that you are on, there's this really fabulous resource called Whose Land. I'm gonna put it in the chat and it's an app you can download or it's a website you can go to and you can start the conversation of learning a bit about the history of the land that you are on. So today we are very excited to be joined by Aisha, Rakim, uh, co-creators of the organization I Dream Library. I've been excited about this for a very long time. They're the Canadian leaders uh, in curating kindergarten to grade 12 stories that center diversity, inclusion, and self-love for racialized and marginalized children. So Aisha and Rakim, welcome. Thank you for joining us. How's your day going? We're going to give us a wave here. So we're also really excited and fortunate to have Taylor Lee Gobble joining us as well today. As an educator, Taylor works primarily with Indigenous youth, hosting skateboarding, arts and cultural activities and workshops. And as the co-founder of Takeover Skateboarding, Taylor strives to create safe spaces uh, full of play and joy for Black Indigenous people of color. So thank you so much for co-creating this session today, everybody. So we're going to talk a little bit about the different ways that artists and makers share stories. We're going to take inspiration from a film that uh, had a great impact, I know, on uh, Aisha and Rakim by Mitch of artist Amanda Strong, and it's called The Flood. We're going to think about learning spaces, think about how you create your own dream learning spaces. And we're going to see how Rakim has created in response to a piece of the film, The Flood. So I would like to give a huge thank you to Massey Books as well. Um, we love supporting indigenous led bookstores. Massey Books is a great way to do that. And Massey has co-curated a list of reading resources, books, illustrations, um, to really help us get into conversations that the film The Flood bring up that we're gonna talk a little bit about, um, about belonging and about learning spaces as well and about how they can be transformed. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the link to this book list in the chat right now. And I'm also going to put the link right now. It's coming. There we go. I'm also going to put the link to um, Massey Books as well. So you can check out the incredible offerings there. Okay. So like I said, today we're going to think about the power of story sharing. I want you to think about ways that you love to learn, ways that you love to share what you learn through stories, um, and the many, many different ways that we can do this. So that means I want to hear, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your thoughts and your ideas. A great way to do this is through the chat function. You can see this little orange circle at the bottom of the screen here. You can click on it and you can add your ideas, your comments, your suggestions for us so you can be part of the conversation. Um, or you can even click on it right now and say hi to everyone who's joining us today. So as we're all going to be joining in with our thoughts and our conversation and our minds, we want to think about ways that we can make this a safe space, a space that's welcoming to everybody. So we have a few agreements that we need to make. We want to agree or sorry, by joining this session, we agree to take pride in speaking up and sharing. We agree to be curious, open and respectful to celebrate each other's ideas. We agree to listen and learn from each other with care and kindness. And we agree to use our comments to uplift each other. One more housekeeping slide here. When I say housekeeping, just some things that help us get the best experience out of Zoom. Um, if captioning might be helpful to your experience with us today, we invite you to click on live transcript. You can even, you can click on it and say hide or show 
uh, live transcription at the bottom. You can see in the slide here where you can do that. Now, this is an auto-generated transcription, so it's not 100% accurate. Some names or places um, will not be read as accurate. Um, even so, we hope that the service will be meaningful to those who want to participate, who uh, want to participate in a way that's not centered around audio or sound. Okay, so as I mentioned, I asked Aisha, Rakim, and Taylor as well to visit the exhibition uh, Stories That Animate Us that's on display at the Vancouver Art Gallery uh, until September 6, actually, not for too much longer, um, and really see what work uh, resonated or stood out to them. And as we mentioned, the story that stood out, the film that stood out was called The Flood by Amanda Strong. So this is a still image from the film. I can also put a link in the chat to how you can watch the film on Amanda Strong's website called Spotted Fawn Productions. But take a look at this still. Take a look at this image. What's the first thing that you notice? You can place your answers in the chat if you like. What's the first thing that you notice when you look at this still? And sometimes I like to go up even closer to look really up close at images. So for example, when I look at this still up close, I don't know if anybody else notices, it looks to me like a canoe. It looks to me like there's really beautiful flower designs on the canoe when we look up close. Evan thinks there are bugs that we see, and Madison says you notice the umbrella, so we notice that it's the storm that's being created possibly. It's also called the flood that gives us some clues. Um, with her production company, Spotted Fawn Productions, Mitchiff artist Amanda Strong creates shadow and stop motion animations with haunting puppet sets that vibrantly bring to life indigenous stories. The film, The Flood, uses no English. It relies on sound, image, and indigenous voices to tell the stories. So Amanda Strong is really highlighting the importance of oral culture, stories that are told orally. Um, she states, when you go back to a lot of Indigenous ideologies and principles, you realize that learning or knowledge comes from so many other sources than an institution or a school. So we can all think about that today. Where do you love to learn? Maybe it's how do you love to learn? I love to learn in spaces like, for example, I love going to the beach and really feeling curious and exploring things that I notice uh, with my son. Maybe it's the, the small crabs or the rocks that we notice. And then we go and look up, up a little bit more information about them. You can think about where you love to learn and what are some of your favorite ways that you love to learn. Maybe it's through singing or films or music or poetry. So the last thing I'll say about this film, The Flood, it features two main characters. There's a spider woman and who's oh, sorry the spider woman is like an entity who creates a youth named thunder and thunder is struggling we saw thunder in the last slide here maybe we can go back to it struggling to canoe through a very heavy storm as well as fight off another storm of falling written documents pieces of paper falling over and over and over again and they're being written by a white man in a wig and it's representing what we call white settler or non-indigenous leadership rule and control so that's that control of whose stories get told how history is written and how stories are shared amanda strong refers to this of a flood of lies of history so the video ends on a note of optimism with a shot of thunder the main character as a student in the current day classroom and the voiceover is done by gigs and hop uh, hip-hop artist the northwest kid so i'm going to place a link in the chat where you can watch that incredible film because nothing is, no description can match the audio and the layers and layers of animation created. This is a photo that I took. Um, it's, let me go right past this. It's actually, um, it's a very small set that Amanda Strong has used to create the animation of Flood. And if you look up really close, maybe you can notice some of the details or think about, okay, where's the setting? What is the character doing? What's around the character? So this, this small set is actually on display at the Vancouver Art Gallery as well. Now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pass it over to uh, Rakim, Aisha, and Taylor to think about ways that, well, we wanna see how Rakim responded to seeing this image. So we're gonna watch 
a really lovely video created in response. We'll just turn our videos back on here. And I'll have you turn your video back on as well, Aisha, because now we want to pass it over to you. Thinking about what are some of the differences and similarities you saw in what Rakim created and this image that we see here. Okay. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Oh, there we are. Yay, we're all in the shot. It's so <laughs> lovely to meet you. My name is Aisha Kiani. My pronouns are they, them. Rakim, you want to introduce yourself? He, him. Rakim's pronouns are he, him. Hi, I'm Taylor. My pronouns are she and they. Beautiful. So we are so happy to see you all today. And yes, we were very, very inspired, Christina, um, by Amanda Strong's work, The Flood. And so what we did in that little clip that we just sent and we took today as we're getting ready to share this beautiful learning space with you here is thinking about how thunder was sort of trapped inside of a box that was very dark and um, thunder was all alone and there wasn't much inspiration or player creativity or connection happening um, for thunder in that moment, um, in that uh, still that we just saw in the classroom. So we thought about taking that same desk and that same moment of concentration at the desk and reimagining what it would look like if we were learning about stories that really reflected us in a space that encouraged us to um, have a relationship with nature, our community, and ourselves in a healthy and loving um, and uh, way, healthy and loving way. So what we did is we uh, first of all came to one of our favorite places to learn, which is right across from our library space um, in what is colonially known as Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Here we, we're in the Co-Food Garden and we love to learn and tell stories in this space. So we brought a little desk and we started to color. And what is the name of the coloring book that we were using? Black Kings. Yeah, the coloring book is called Black Kings and it has incredible illustrations and affirmations in it. And if you look at the beginning of that video, um, it says, I am worthy of joy. And that's what Rakim is coloring. And it really flips the narrative of how we interact with really like, um, things as simple as sort of worksheets and how worksheets can share our humanity and our diversity and our beauty back to us, right? So we always think of ways to very subtly but impactfully inspire teachers and caregivers and students to create safer spaces through educational tools like books and coloring sheets and worksheets. Um, and then we pulled back to reveal the tagline for I Dream Library, which is our stories live here, which is sort of strung um, across. And I'm gonna show you right now what it looks like. We're gonna flip our camera and you can see right now. See, there it is. That's where, um, I hope this is clear, but we'll, we'll get a closer look to it soon. Um, but this is where that scene was shot really quickly. Um, there we go. Rakim, do you have anything to say um, sort of about what is like a favorite place for you to learn or how do you like to learn? I like to learn. Um, I like to learn about animals. Yeah. Do you like to learn about animals like inside or outside? Do you like to be outside when you're learning about animals? Outside. Yeah, what is your, like, what's a fun environment for you to learn about animals in? Like a city, there's a forest, there's beaches. It's... 
mountains? Where would you like to go? Hmm. I want to go to Madagascar. Madagascar. That would be an amazing place to learn about some animals. What's your favorite animal? A Fusa. Fusa, that's right. Oh, that's a really, you know, I just learned about the Fusa when it became Rakim's favorite animal. Rakim loves to learn about animals. And so please let us know what your favorite thing to learn about it is. What is your favorite um, area of focus? You can write that in the chat. Christina can share that with us. We would love to have you um, let us know uh, as we go on here. Taylor, what is your favorite place to learn or how, how did um, what we saw, the, the film from Amanda Strong, there we go, thanks Rakim. <laughs> <laughs> the film from Amanda Strong um, trigger something in you in terms of learning in, in a more empowered way. Um, I think that watching the film made me think of how I, the first time I felt connected to learning something was through like inside myself and um, not from anything external. And it was when I finally was able to connect with stories from my family through dreams and through uh, daydreams and learning how to appreciate that learning and, and know how important it was. And I think her, there's moments where where it feels like she's daydreaming. <laughs> Are we back? I got a little phone call there. <laughs> um, but yeah, she had daydream sequences and that's where you could feel there was really something happening. And uh, yeah, I related to that a lot. Thank you so much. I love that you said that because actually the inspiration, oh, Rakim really wants to get yeah, us all in this shot. Thank you. The inspiration for the project that we have called I Dream Library did come to me in a dream. On March 18th, 2017, I woke up and I had the words I Dream Library in my head and I didn't know what was supposed to happen with them. And it took me six months to even figure out what I was supposed to do. But that's why we're called I Dream Library. So I want you to know that it's very, very possible for your good dreams to become real. You know, the dreams of what you want for yourself and your future and to imagine is one of the most amazing things that you can do for yourself and your community in the world. Um, so any of you who are daydreamers, love that about yourself. We love that about you. We love that about us. Um, how about you say where you would like to learn? Where I would like to learn? Um, you know what? I would really like to learn really far up north. Um, I would like to go back to where my ancestors are from um, on one side, which is 400 kilometers above the Arctic Circle in a country called Norway. And so I was born in Norway and I would love to go all the way back up there to learn. There's a university that I would love to go check out up there. What do you like to learn about? I like to learn about history. Mm -hmm. I love to learn about history and I love to watch and learn about um, people and communities connect over the arc of time. Um, and it really helps me when I feel stuck in some moments. Um, and I think when I meet people who try and share what they believe as the only true thing, understanding history um, and, and what's happened from many different perspectives lets me know that if there's a hard moment, um, it'll always come to an end. And I would love to be part of like getting through it. And it helps me feel less stuck in the present moment when I understand how people have, have, you know, traveled and, 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 you know, address things over time in history, I guess. I love history <laughs> because I love the future. So I like mm -hmm. to figure out the future by connecting to history. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know what? I think that Christina, it might be a really awesome time to begin a little journey through the garden with Rakim. What do you think? I would love to see that. We had a few other people say they love learning about animals, about rocks, cats in my neighborhood. I love that. 
around the ocean and harbor, that's also a great place to learn. I love learning from water and want to learn more and more from the water. But I would love to see, let's explore your space a little bit more. Some other people are saying learning at the lake, learning from deer and other animals. I have a lot of deer close to where we are. Ooh, I love deer. I love baby deer. Okay, well, all right, everybody. So Rakim's gonna take us on a little journey through the garden and we're gonna collect a couple of things that have been growing. Some of the things he's planted, some of the things I've planted and other people who take care of this space together have planted. So we're gonna spend um, a few minutes traveling through about five minutes and then we're gonna end up at one of Rakim's favorite places in the garden and he's gonna share something special with you. Okay. All right, Rakim. So where would you like to take us first? Now there's many beautiful things in this garden. There's flowers, there's plants, and there's food. Some of the flowers you can eat, some you can look at. The food, you can eat some of the food and you can do so many, so many different things. So go ahead and we'll just follow you. I know there's a little patch of something over here. Mint? Oh yeah, there's some mint. We found some mint the other day. And I don't know if anybody has seen mint before. I'm gonna show you up close. It looks like this. And Rakim, if you take it and you clap your hands, that's a really amazing way to get the smell and the fragrance of the mint out. How does it smell? Minty. Minty. Um, and then also you can eat it raw or you can let it dry out and you can make tea from it too. Or you could chop it up and put it in some yogurt. Some people do that also. What else is, are we going to move? How about this? Oh yeah, I think these are nasturtium leaves. Are these nasturtium leaves? Mm -hmm. <gasps> Did you know, can you eat nasturtium leaves, Rakim? Yeah. What do they taste like when you eat them? They're a little spicy, but not too bad. Not too bad, hey? Mm -hmm. What about the flowers? Can you eat nasturtium flowers too? Yeah, you just have to watch out for bugs. Okay, let's check this one. Does this have bugs in it? No. No, let's check underneath on behind the leaf. No. Oh, wait, I do see a little bug. Okay, let's see that little bug. Let's take it off and put the bug back into nature and then... <laughs> the nasturtium can go into our mouth after that. How do you like to eat the nasturtium in the leaf? Mostly I just like to kind of wrap it up. Uh-huh. Like this. Kind of wrapping it up like a little burrito. A little burrito, yeah. Mm. Mm. Pretty good. Pretty good. <laughs> okay. There's raspberries. Oh, raspberries are in season, everybody. I don't know if you have raspberries in your neighborhood or maybe in your backyard or... Um, you want one? Yeah, I'll have one. But when I was growing up, we had a lot of raspberries and I used to pick them and eat them with ice cream. Wow. Rakim and I um, don't have a yard because we live in an apartment. So that's why it's so amazing to have this community mm -hmm. garden to be able to come out and still experience nature here. Oh, let's go to the secret garden. Oh, okay. There's a little secret garden back here. And that's it. It's just a quiet place where people can hang out. There's more nasturtium leaves. Mm -hmm. And also look in this bed here, we have some chives. Some chives. And what are chives, Rakim? They're mostly, you can put them in soup. Mm-hmm. They're a type um, of onion. Yeah, they're a type of onion. And you can also eat them raw as mm -hmm. well. If anybody has any questions for Rakim as we're doing this little tour, because we're getting close to his special spot that he can share with you, um, feel free to ask Rakim. Do 
you think we should show them the sunflowers that have been growing? <gasps> There's some very, very tall Sunflower. sunflowers. Look at these. And let's see what's happening on the sunflowers. Right now, there's a little bee. The bee went away. We might have disturbed it. Oh, it came back. Let's see. Does everybody see the bee on the sunflower? If you did, you can let us know in the chat if you saw the bee. There's. Oh, and there's tomatoes too. There's so many amazing things growing in this garden. Mm -hmm. We won't pick those tomatoes. We're gonna let them get a little bit more ripe. Yeah. Rakim, do you wanna take us to your favorite place in the garden now? Oh, are these, I don't know what these oh, are, no. sunflowers. They're a little small yellow flower. I'm not sure what their name is, but if somebody knows, you can let us know in the chat too. Mm -hmm. Look at this other really beautiful purple one. This color is amazing. Oh, yes. And there's, yes, echinacea. Well, look. So here are some little. You want to see if you can find some echinacea? Yeah, well, that might have been echinacea. There's definitely echinacea right there. Look. There's usually a lot of bees around the echinacea. Let's see. Wow. So beautiful. Mm -hmm. Everybody, there's so much amazing activity in this garden right now. The garden is a great place for us to connect and learn um, about nature um, and the relationship and the stories that they're telling each other. Look, everybody. Wow, these marigolds are very busy. There's a big community of bees happening by the marigolds. There's also some in your hair. Oh, yeah. Okay, Rakim is going to show you <laughs> that Taylor put some marigolds in my hair. I hope the bees don't um, come for that one. But I did want to blend in today. <laughs> so let's go and visit Rakim's um, favorite spot now. Oh, yeah. We're going to go and visit with Taylor after, too. But first, we're going to... I'm gonna come this way. Rakim, I know I love learning from plants and watching plants, but I also love learning from other people about plants. So it's really cool that Azara noticed that echinacea, that we I didn't know what that was. And I loved learning a little bit more from what you love as well, too. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Rakim, for sharing that. <gasps> okay, Rakim, where are we? We are at the fig tree. We're also some little figs right here. Let's see. Oh, there it is. There's some more little figs. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. So under this fig tree, we have set up a little library. And I just want to check in on the time right now. We would love to just read a couple pages from a book for you because, of course, a way to share stories is also through literature. How would you tell them what the book name is? The book is called From the Stars in the Sky to the Fish in the Sea. And who writes stories and also who's featured in stories is a really important way of creating what's called equitable learning spaces, which means that we're giving voice to people whose identities and stories and histories have previously um, been excluded on purpose. So this is a really incredible book. And Rakim, if you even just want to show the cover and then read a few pages for everybody, that would be great. We would love to hear it, Rakim. From the stars in the sky to the fish in the sea. Once upon a time, in a little blue house on a hill on the edge of town, 
a baby was born. They were born when both the moon and the sun were in the sky, so the baby couldn't decide what to be. Mm -hmm. Boy or girl, bird or fish, cat or rabbit, tree or star, so the baby looked a little like everything. They looked very strange. All, all, let's take a picture. Mm -hmm. All the same, the baby's mother gave her, her child a bath and rocked them in her arms. Your name is Mulan. She sang a song that her own mother had sung to her long ago. Whatever you dream of, I believe you can. From the stars in the sky to the fish in the sea. You can crawl like a crab or with feathers fly high and I'll always be there. I'll, I'll be near standing by. And you know that I'll love you till the day that I die. And even though they still couldn't decide that the baby felt loved. Mulan grew, grew up to be a strange and magical child who was always changing. They grew feathers and wings to fly with blue birds in the morning, scales and a tail to swim with fish in the afternoon, and fur and paws to play with puppies in the evening. No matter how many things Mulan became, their mother always brought them back into the little blue house, gave them a bath and tucked them into bed. At the day's end, as stars rose, she sang. She said, whatever you dream of, I believe you can be. From the stars in the sky to the fish in the sea. And Mulan felt loved. Okay, Rakim, you know what? Thank you so much. Because we have a couple more things to share with you before our time is up today. I wanted to say that if you want to find this book and learn more about it, please go ahead um, and get it at your local bookstore or also from our community partner, um, for this event, which is Massey Books as well here in Vancouver, BC. Um, and then, and you can finish the story there, but that's a really incredible story about loving your child <laughs> um, for whoever they are. And so I love this book. It's a favorite at iDream Library for people of all ages. Um, Rakim, yeah. I would love it if Next, we're going to go and visit Taylor. Okay. And there's a little treat that you're going to make us all at the end, right? Mm -hmm. So would you want to go get started on the treat? And then I'll go visit Taylor. Okay. And we'll come visit you when we're done. Okay. Okay, bye. 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 Okay, everybody. Thank you so much so far for hanging out with us. We're going to go and visit Taylor now, who's really close. Hi, Taylor. How are you? Okay, so we're gonna get a, there we go. We're pretty close. Yeah. Maybe I'll just sit here across from you. I know the audience can't see me, but there we go. That's a really gorgeous view of the sky as well. It's a beautiful day outside. Yeah. So Taylor, how do you like to tell stories and what are some ways that you like to tell stories um, your favorite ways and some ways that might be different from how we usually think, which is written in books. I think one of my favorite like ways that I tell stories is through beading and beadwork. And I haven't been doing it very long. I've been beading probably three or four years at this point. 
exactly. And it's a way to tell stories that's really, really deeply connected for me and for my family. And it tells stories that are so, that I've lived for so long and that are able to come back to me. And just, I feel really lucky to be able to do that. That's really beautiful and very powerful. And I can definitely attest to Taylor's incredible beadwork. Um, also, if anybody has seen the flood before um, or remembers a couple of the images from Amanda Strong's work, there is um, Thunder is wearing a vest that also has little flowers that would have been beaded on it. Um, and so that's definitely a connection in a way to tell stories is through textile um, conversations. And so people can weave, uh, people also bead, people quilt, people knit, people crochet. There are so many different ways that we share our stories through tactile things like fabrics. Mm -hmm. Beautiful because um, you know, I'm a chip as well. I artist and um, those vests were very very important to the way we shared who we were and where we were from and what family we belonged to and what land we were responsible to and um, it was all through at least within our culture it was all through living things so it was all through plant medicines and flowers and um, that was the way that we shared stories and shared who we were, was through the meaning behind these flowers and these plants and these like living relatives. And um, yeah, I just, I just always have like loved that so much and loved how much the layers of knowledge were able to be brought forth through beadwork and it was teaching you about the world, about yourself, about community, and also about the world around you and how to interact with it and what it has to show you. So. That's so important. It's so important to value the way that um, Indigenous nations tell stories um, the same way that we value written, published literature um, in a in like the a very common colonial format. And Christina, thank you so much for sharing those images again. Mm -hmm. So everybody was able to connect with um, those same floral patterns that were uh, also on the canoe that Thunder was in. Um, that is it. That is some something that I Dream Library really wants to um, speak to is the diverse way in which um, Black communities, Indigenous communities, and people of color communities, newcomers as well, the way that we have shared our stories for thousands of years is so valuable and so important. Sometimes it just gets housed under this context of art, um, but art is our history as well. Um, and so uh, thank you so much, Taylor, for sharing that. And would you like to share something also that you've written? Because Taylor also writes um, and creates their own written and spoken stories as well. Yeah, I have a few things, but I think I might just share something that connects to beading as well. And um, one of my favorite things about beading is doing workshops. And I love sharing the stories of how my my grandmother passed away before I was born but when I started beading I started connecting with her and so this is just like a little thing I wrote about how it means what it means to me to connect to her through beadwork um, I think I bead my kukum into everything I do witnessing her and who she was and still is with every bead and every pass through black felt this is my prayer to you. Beading allows me to feel both at peace and overrun by power. Beading opens space for the deepest connections while allowing me to disconnect and free myself of everything that was never mine. 
Thank you for giving me this big open bleeding heart. Thank you for giving me the strength to protect it. Thank you for passing on to me the, the knowledge that I may direct it. Thank you for giving me the wisdom to know when it is not my job, when it is not my fight, and when I can just be on this black felt. Taylor, <laughs> snaps, finger snaps, <laughs> claps in the chat. Let us know what you think about Taylor's incredible poem and how you share your story and your history, where you're from. Thank you so much, Taylor, for sharing yours. Thank you, Thank you for having me and for listening and for all of you for being. Oh, that's so lovely. You know what I think is amazing after we do a lot of speaking, which both Taylor and I have just finished mm -hmm. doing, and you've been doing some listening, is I hope that you have gotten yourself a refreshment or we'll give you a moment to go and get a refreshment because we're going to go on our way to visit Rakim now. Mm -hmm. I'm going to flip this camera so you can see me. Hi. Mm -hmm. And Rakim is making something beautiful for us to all share. So if anybody needs to go grab a little bit of water, um, or a little snack. You have a minute to do that as we walk over to see what Rakim has done with what he's collected in the garden. I also, while we're doing that, wanted to just say that cooking is a really incredible way of sharing traditional and ancestral knowledge. And Rakim does that and also shares a lot of his family history um, with his dad through cooking as well. Um, recipes that were passed down from his great grandmother, Grandma Winnie, <laughs> to his Yaya, to his dad, and then to Rakim. And that is how they share their stories and their history together as well and how they learn together. So let's just see what's happening. It's really good. Wow, Rakim, what are you making? And who is this with you? This is Jenny from the Kofi Garden, also a partner for uh, YG Margaret. Yeah, hi Jenny. Hi, it's so nice to be here with everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny helps us with our accessibility consultation and accessibility is a way to make sure that as many people as possible can be involved in the learning and that we do and the resources that we, we share to educators and to caregivers and to schools. Okay, and what are we making Rakim? Yeah. We're making lemonade. I think it was three more spoons of sugar, right? Wow. I'm so excited. What are we going to... One more. One more, yeah. Are we going to put something in our lemonade that is mm, from the garden specifically? What's in there? Oh, wow. Look, we have some of the nasturtiums. We have some mint. We also have some rosemary in here. Let me show you. So this is rosemary, everybody. Okay, Taylor, prove to us how amazing this smells. Okay, rosemary is one of my favorite mm. smells and cedar. Yeah, oh. rosemary and cedar together would be Oh, it's gorgeous. Also, if you see this whole floor that we're standing on is cedar mulch um, and when, and so that's, <laughs> what we're also in these are raspberries really beautiful little nasturtium flowers and mint so christina we're just gonna wait for this now and we're we're ready to to see what's been happening in the chat and talk to everybody further while rakim stirs this up for us we have a lot of yums in the chat rakim uh including myself my glass of water just doesn't look quite as <laughs> quite as nice as that even seeing the way that you had it prepared in the bowl um the different plants in the bowl look at that seeing the bold so colors coming together wow glass. it's gonna be really unique mm -hmm. this is a really great way to have different um colors and i know people also do this when they make popsicles you could make a oh whole jug goodness. of lemonade with some berries and herbs in it and then make popsicles with them too that would be super fun that's an awesome idea i think we'll be needing some of those in the next coming days to help cool down okay. not just any popsicles right thinking about what you've added and collected that 
are through people that have shared stories and knowledge with you, Rakim. I think that's so cool. I think it's so great that you have that connection to family and your family's history through thinking about food and foods about sharing too, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, together. And we have some people in the chat also thanking you, Taylor, for sharing um, your beautiful words and that sense of being. And I want to thank you for sharing that, like such a tender and powerful um, connection and creating a tender and powerful moment in ways that just helping us all to see different ways that we can share stories and share our hearts um, and, and pass it down through other generations. And someone else noticed, mentioned how powerful, but also vulnerable um, exploring stories can be mm -hmm. too. I think that's a really nice comment as well. So thinking about being vulnerable, maybe not knowing or being in a process of learning, but how powerful that can be, as Zara mentioned. Ooh, first sip. How is it? That's it's safe to share <laughs> well we are ready Rakim let's go and we're also going to pour one for you the audience and we'll just set it aside here for you because you're in our minds and our hearts right now as we share this beautiful um drink that we've created together because you were here with us as we yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were here with us as we made it so you're part of the love that we that you know that makes it taste so good. And I always say that the most important ingredient, and I also got this because Rakim's dad puts a lot of this into his food too, that he teaches Rakim is to make your food with love, right? Um, and you can, when you do, and you're happy and you're um, just connecting and learning with your, with your food, just as you would have that same respect for for people that you can taste it it tastes even better i love that idea respecting your food just like as it is a living breathing being that's going to add to your nourishment and add to your body absolutely thank you so much so has anybody thought about their um favorite place that they would learn if they could learn outside of a box like thunder was really imagining herself outside in a totally new space, one that wasn't filled with so many laws coming at her so fast. And she was dreaming her way out of it. And we've shown you one of the ways that we've dreamed our way out of it. And some of the ways that we continue to do that through growing food together, through cooking, also through writing and um, feeding and poetry. What are some of the ways that yeah the audience has also thought about having the most amazing place that they could to learn in what is a wonderful place if you could dream of any place to learn in what a fantastic question as i mentioned before for me um i'm gonna say hi to you all now because i haven't seen you too much yeah we haven't seen you too much i love that though i love that i've been behind the camera and I love how you even look connected to what's around you by celebrating the marigolds in your hair. And yes. <laughs> Thank you, Taylor, for that again. And also, you know, like we're matching. Taylor and I can kind of match now. See, look at this color palette. Cute, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's working well. Um, Sherry in the chat is saying learning near water. So similar to what I was thinking. Yes. Love that. Thank you so much. Sherry, I love learning near water. We can learn so much from water. And Christina, you know, the little, the little crabs in the beach, how they live, how they live under the sand, when they come out, when they go in. Um, crabs on their own are just so incredible. Well, I'm also, I don't know if anybody here studies astrology, which is another way that people <laughs> do connect and learn about not only the world that we live in, but all the planets around us too, as a community. Um, and in that way, um, I'm born in July and July is very much connected to a little crabs at the beach. Uh -huh. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Madison is also saying learning at the beach too. Nice. Um, Zara saying on the Yukon River in the middle of uh, nowhere in complete wild with no service for days on end. No service, I'm sure, meaning just like a disconnection from 
our day to day, maybe that's what you're thinking is there. I love that again, that, that reference to water. It seems like we're all kind of connecting that. I'll say something to the connection to everyone saying being by the water, because there's a lot of teaching around the water naturally cleansing you and it not needing to try to cleanse you. But as soon as you're by the water, it's just what it does. And it does it freely and it does it without asking for anything in return. And it will just allow you to be in a very clear state because it the energy from it takes away a lot of the things that we think of as stressors or as anxiety or as um, external impacts on how we interact with our learning or how we interact with ourselves. And so I think it's really cool that everyone's saying we want to be by the water because that's when we're really at a most calm or grounded state. Thank you for that, Sarah. I love how you talked about the energy of the space that you're learning into, right? And that, how that impacts, like you're saying, your whole body. So coming into your whole body um, to create mm -hmm. that learning space. And like you mentioned before, um, what you learned from within as well. So really thinking of the whole picture coming together to create these, these powerful spaces, I think is really fantastic. You know what? I think I want to go be by some water now, actually. I don't know about everybody else. <laughs> um, maybe before we go, if anybody else has any comments or questions, please feel free to add them in the chat. Aisha, Taylor, and Rakim, do you have any other comments or questions that you want to add before we end our time together here today? With the word to bring into maybe their everyday use or to research or look up to learn more about a connection and the word interdependence um i-n-t-e-r-d-e-p-e-n-d-e-n-a-n-c oh i hope i really spelled that right and if i didn't it's okay imperfectly <laughs> perfect interdependence is the word um, and it's a guiding principle in terms of how I Dream Library understands and practices connecting with learning, um, including our environment, including students, including caregivers, including the ideas of what we want to be in the future and our past, um, that we're in relationship and learning, um, and that we're always giving and receiving in, in a flow and equally and uh, that it's a joy to do so. So thank you so much, everybody, for being here today. Rakim, you want to say bye-bye to everybody? Bye. Have fun wherever you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's great advice to have fun wherever you go. And um, you brought a lot of joy to the space here, all three of you. It was such an honor to come together with all of you who are joining us. Thank you for spending your time with us today. And thank you for bringing all of this beautiful energy together um, and to help us think about new ways of learning and sharing stories. I do also want to quickly thank um, the lead sponsor that makes Art at Home possible, Canada Life, and our visionary community access partner um, is the Diamond Foundation. Thank you for helping make these programs possible. It's so fabulous that we can still connect even in a virtual space. Um, I want to thank all my colleagues at the Vancouver Art Gallery that make our sessions possible. And, but of course, the biggest thank you is to you. So again, thank you for coming together. Thank you to Aisha. Thank you so much, Taylor. And thank you, Rakim, for sharing so openly and honestly. If you would like to share some more ideas or thoughts or feedback, please feel free. I'm going to put my email right in the chat there. I love hearing um, what you take away from these sessions and also how, how can we serve you better as well with these sessions. And you know what? We also have another session coming up in October, on October 6th. I'm really excited about If you'd like to join us again, we're going to be working with uh, a public mural artist, uh, Oakland Galbraith. So thinking about ways that we can reimagine visual culture to transform the spaces about us, to help us think in new and exciting ways. I'll pop that in the chat as well. And I guess until then, just keep connecting to each other, keep connecting to the world around you through sharing food, through art, through stories. And until then, thank you everyone.